What's up guys, today is the first time I've reviewed a Pro XR paddle on this channel, and it's Zane Navratil's signature paddle. Before before we do that, I want everyone to know that Zane and I are decent friends and we banter quite regularly, so take everything I'm about to say for the next one minute, half serious and half banter, with maybe just a little bit more serious in there. Alright, look at this paddle. After looking at it, the only thing less likely to get on a podium than Zane himself is this paddle for a design award. Zane is pretty sensible regarding branding and design, but I can't understand why his signature paddle looks like a kindergartner designed it. In this day and age, a lot of raw carbon fiber paddles blend together because they all have very similar designs because you're just kind of limited in what you can do with these materials. But the opposite approach was taken with this paddle where it looks so busy and crowded that you can't possibly not notice it. Maybe this was part of the plan, but I think it's on the lowest end of the spectrum when it comes to raw carbon fiber paddle designs. In fact, I thought it was so poor that I went ahead and redesigned it myself. All they had to do was remove a lot of the text from the paddle. You don't need the social media icons on there, you don't need to show the ProXR logo in four different spots, and there's a combination of lower and uppercase text all over the paddle. The whole design can just be simplified a lot. And after you do, it looks much cleaner. I will say the blue accents were a nice touch on the paddle. The only area they messed up was just by putting way too much stuff on the face. So feel free to steal my design, Zane. I won't even charge you for it. The paddle costs $209.99, but I have a discount code for ProXR that will give you a $20 discount on any paddle if you use code PBSTUDIO. So because of this, we'll assume the price to be $190 for the rest of the review. The paddle has a T700 raw carbon fiber face, 14 millimeter thickness, edge foam, weight of 8.2 ounces, swing weight of 111, elongated shape, polymer core, 1688 RPM, a four inch grip circumference, and a very long six inch handle. Now, when I saw six inches, I thought that's a really long handle. There are few paddles on the market with a handle that long, but when I got it in my hand, it didn't feel that much bigger than some of the 5.5 inch handles on the market. So I grabbed a bunch of my paddles and measured all of them. After I overgripped Zane's paddle, it did measure right around six inches. When I measure my Carbon 1X, it comes in at the same measurement. When held up against each other, I notice no difference in neck taper or handle length, and the carbon is advertised as a 5.5 inch handle versus six inches on Zane's handle. When you hold up other paddles such as the Yola Hyperion, Selkirk Mach 6, and Engage Pursuit MX, they all have nearly identical handle lengths ranging from about 5.75 inches to 6 inches. So all of that to say, yes, Zane's paddle does have a long handle, but if you're used to a Carbon 1X, Engage Pursuit, or Yola handle length, then Zane's paddle really isn't going to feel that much longer, especially if you wrap your overgrips higher on the neck. As far as the listed specs go, the one thing that may be appealing for some is the lower swing weight for a paddle with such a long handle. Most paddles with a handle length this long tend to be higher in swing weight. 111 puts it in a range very close to many standard shaped paddles, which tend to provide faster hands at the net, and Zane's paddle was quite maneuverable compared to many elongated paddles on the market. Okay, so when I was first playing with this paddle, I thought the power was honestly not that great. We aren't talking 003 soft or Halo XL soft, but with how stiff the face is, I was very disappointed by the power. After playing with it more and more, I do think it actually has adequate power, but less than thermoformed paddles. It feels less solid in comparison and doesn't plow through the ball as well, which makes sense since it's a low-ish swing weight. Regardless, the power is acceptable and probably in a similar range as a Vision 14mm or Hyperion 14mm. Coming from two months of playing with the Legacy, Carbon X series, Vatic Pro, and 6.0, these all hit very hard. So my gauge for non-thermoformed paddles has been readjusting to remember what a power paddle was when it wasn't thermoformed. So I would say that Zane's paddle definitely has some juice behind it, but after you use a thermoformed paddle, it's just kind of like, eh, it could have some more. 
But if you do want more power, you can always add lead tape because the swing weight is already pretty low. So you have quite a bit of swing weight to play with before the paddle gets too unmanageable. Control was also reasonable, but I did frequently find that playing with a Dura resulted in balls dying off the face that I wasn't expecting. In fact, all of my testing was on a Dura initially, and I really didn't like the paddle at all. I did one session with a Franklin and almost every complaint I had about the paddle went away. Of course, Dura and Franklin are very different. We all know that, but this was one of the first times that I personally noticed it when doing a paddle review. So moving forward, I will do my best to clarify what ball was tested during my review. With the Dura, I found that on short hops, dinks occasionally, and resets, if you didn't nail the ball in the center, the edges felt very jarring and off-putting. With a Franklin, I didn't notice the same issue as much. Overall, I wouldn't say my soft game suffered much with this paddle, but when using a Dura, I found that it wasn't the most enjoyable part of the paddle to me. I found that thermoformed paddles have better sweet spot performance, so despite having more power, they were easier to use for my soft game. Specifically, the Carbon 1X, 60 Double Black Diamond, and Vatic Pro Flash 16mm. Now, before we move on, the one last thing I want to talk about is the ultra raw carbon claim. I put it under a microscope and didn't notice anything drastically different from what we've seen before. Certainly not the smaller pattern we've seen on newer paddles and the RPMs don't suggest that it's that crazy either. So more than likely the ultra raw name is just a marketing gimmick. The one thing I will say is that certain areas of the paddle do feel very gritty in comparison to other raw carbon fiber paddles. And yes, I did test the paddle and it passed. So that's not a worry. But yeah, I think the ultra raw thing probably doesn't mean much. So overall, Zane's paddle performs reasonably, but nothing outstanding. If you're looking for specific attributes, Zane's paddle may fit the bill. For example, if you want a long handle for two-handed backhands, a lower thickness, low swing weight for faster hands, and aren't too concerned about sweet spot performance, then Zane's paddle is great. You aren't going to find many paddles that have all of the attributes in one paddle. However, due to the price of the paddle, there are many better alternatives on the market for cheaper. And this leads me into something I want to discuss because people frequently misunderstand how I view certain paddles. People think if the paddle doesn't fit my play style, I'm just gonna trash on it, and that honestly isn't the case. Even if it doesn't work for me, I understand that there are plenty of people out there who may still like the paddle. And I think there are two things that are very important when looking to buy a paddle. That's the price, and the performance. Usually in most markets, the higher the price, the better the performance. For the most part, that has been true in pickleball up until about the last six or so months. In that time, we've had a lot of paddles flood the market with great performance for very reasonable prices. For $100, you have the Ronbis R1.16, x back from Amazon, Bison, and Spartus. These raw carbon fiber paddles perform very well, especially considering how cheap they are. Now, if you go up to about $130 to $160, you have Vatic Pro, Legacy, Groovin, and the Halos from Selkirk, and a slew of other great performing raw carbon fiber paddles. With how well Vatic and Legacy perform for the price, it's tough to justify spending $190 plus on something that's trying to achieve a similar idea, but costs more. The only notable technology is the edge foam, which many companies are starting to offer. So you have to ask yourself, for 190, what makes it better than any of the paddles in the 100 to 160 dollar range? And if you ask me, there's not that much that it does better than those. Let's even pretend for a minute that the performance is equal. If that's the case, why would you spend anywhere from $90 to $40 more to buy a paddle with equal performance? I suppose in this case, if you really like Zane, that would be one reason. So overall, in my mind, this is part of what makes Zane's paddle a tougher buy. It may not be a bad paddle, but you aren't getting as much value for $190, and many of these new companies are doing a great job at keeping the big ones honest with their pricing. They'll either need to lower prices or find ways to increase performance in ways that the smaller companies can't. But considering many of these paddles come out of the same factory and costs are nearly the same, you have to wonder how the bigger companies are going to handle it. If you want comparable performance options, I would look into the Vatic Pro 16mm, Legacy Pro 60 Double Black Diamond, Volare Mach 1 14mm, or the Yola Hyperion 14mm. For all of those except the Yola, you can use code PBSTUDIO to save some money on your order. But hey, 
If you want to support Zane because he's a cool guy, by all means, check out his paddle. It performs adequately. It just may not be the top of the charts when it comes to value. For me personally, if I had to go to a tournament tomorrow, I would not choose to play with Zane's paddle if it was one of my options. It doesn't fit my play style that well, and if I was also going to have to spend my own money, I think there are other options that perform better for cheaper. So there you guys go. Those are my thoughts on Zane Navratil's signature paddle. If you enjoyed this review, make sure to click like and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.